All right, man, and we're back. We are back again to start the month off right. Today is July 1st, man, and the sun is beating down on the area. It is going to be quite a muggy day today, but that should not deter us from our passions and our goals. You know, people are saying that the, that the price of old Redenbacher kernels have actually gone up because kids are going out there, man, on the sidewalk. They're dumping the kernels, and they're getting popcorn almost instantly. It's pure insanity. That's the world we live in, man. And I say, okay, we're going to take it as we go. All right, so July 1st, man, my God, there's so much that has to be done. It's not even funny. So much has to be done this weekend especially, but you know what? It's going to be a good weekend. I, uh, we got July 4th coming up on Monday, and man, I love it. That's one of my favorite holidays, man. I love the I love the whole mentality of just, you know what? We're at that halfway point of the year. We're going to celebrate. We're going to have a good time, and we're going to enjoy ourselves, man. But that should not deter us from getting the work done, and the work has had a great amount done this week plenty of writing and reading has been accomplished this week and uh oh man it's just it's it's been a very busy but a very good week and we're going to talk about some films today and it's all going to be good so even gosh even after this i gotta get started on the whole 1956 episode that's going to be up this weekend man keep an eye out for that it's a lot of work to do it's a lot to uh, compose my thoughts get the clips together put everything like that but when it comes when it's all done man and i'm hearing it back it makes it all worth it man so that needs to be done other tasks need to be done for today man i can't even tell you i i the I can't even imagine distracting myself with any kind of nonsensical, just just outside, just social obligations, man. You know, I'm so past just, you know, hanging out and, and chasing after girls and that nonsense, you know. There's so much that's got to be done that I can't even imagine just that whole mindset and that whole lifestyle. So if that's your thing, man, go for it. But gosh, man, that's just not even in my realm of thought right now. But with that said, we're going to be talking about some films that I've seen this year that I would like to give a bit of a heads up to. Films that may or may not be on your radar, but uh, at this point should be at least almost out at on home video. I don't know. Um, let me just get my uh, list right here. I've seen quite a bit this year, actually, theatrically and streaming. So I've seen some good, some not so good, but that's right. I'm going to be talking about some titles that I think are worth your time. And I'm not going to uh, I'm not gonna go over um, ones I've already talked about. I've talked about a couple so far. Um, Montana Story was one that I devoted an episode to. Uh, Memoria was one that I talked about in episode 8, I believe, or one of those. Um, what else did I talk about? I think it may have just been those two. I talked about uh, about Top Gun Maverick. That was one I talked about. I was quite a fan of that one. Um, I'm not going to go over everything because I've seen quite a, like I said, I've seen quite a bit this year, and um, some of these might be considered 2021 films, so I don't know if I'll end up doing a end-of-the-year discussion, because um, I feel those are so common, those are so common, and everybody does those, that I don't really, I don't really feel like I need to throw my hat into that, but you know, it's a, it's a possibility, um, when it comes to putting my thoughts together for an end of the year list, if I do it, I'm, I'm not going to include any films that would be considered for 2021. So that's why at least if I talk about it now, I could at least bring it up. Um, and I'm not going to go in depth with any of these films because I, I may not even get to them all, or maybe I will, but I'm not going to give a review or anything of the such. I'm just going to talk about, uh, why you should, why, you know, you should check them out or keep them on your radar, man. If they happen to be playing near you or they're happy to be available streaming and, um, Actually, I realize now that uh, Gaspar Knows Vortex is out streaming. Um, it came out streaming a couple days ago. I think I'm going to ha have to watch that this weekend, man. I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, man. Oh, gosh. I, I really got to check that film out. So much to do, guys. So much to do. With that said, um, let's see here. All right. Uh, okay, first one was put up by Shudder. Uh, this is The Sadness. This is 
from South Korea, I believe. I actually have no idea. It may not even be South Korea, but this is one that got a lot of talk when it, but before it even um, came out here. There, there was a lot of people who had seen this film, and there was a lot of discussion about it, of just being this crazy, violent zombie film. And before I continue on, people go, it's, it's not a zombie film, it's an infected film, it's this, it's that. I always think, too... What an acquaintance of mine said, where he was uh, talking about vampire films, where the rules change so much, but no one ever says, oh, this isn't a vampire film. They're killed by this, or they're killed by that. To me, I don't care in the slightest. I'm not going to, to identify if it's a zombie film or an infected film, because it is such a time waster, and me even explaining it is wasting time. I'm going to call it a zombie film, because they walk like zombies, they act like zombies. They're zombies. If you consider them infected, that's okay. But don't make a big deal out of it, like I'm doing right now. But The Sadness is a terrific film. Very mean-spirited, very violent. Um, it's in, in complete insanity. These zombies are going around uh, uh, raping and just you know, just being brutal. These people, man, it's gnarly as hell. They're, I mean, it's these zombies. They take their time to just mess with these people, man. There's, there's one part of these two zombies have this guy on the ground, and they have his arm stretched out and one of them like stomps down on it and breaks it oh man that was brutal but this film it's such an adrenaline rush man you watch it and you just see all of the people put together on this and it's just it's just so uh uh, uh fascinating and it's just you just wonder how you can even stop something like this but uh uh it's it's just a terrific film man uh it's just it, uh, zombie films in particular, I think, have reached a point that now, when there's a really good one that comes out, they really stand above the rest, and, and this is one for sure. This is uh, streaming on Shutter. This is a, a definite uh, one you got to check out if it's got to be your thing. If it's not, if you if you think that uh, very gory, very violent, mean spirited uh, uh, films of the sex will not be your thing, then then obviously don't check it out. But if you are, this you got to check this out. That might be 2021. Uh, this one might be 2021 as well. This is, uh, I don't think I talked about this. Maybe I didn't. Uh, but this is Petite Maman. Uh, this was from the director of Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which is a film I haven't seen yet. Uh, Celine Shiyama. Uh, this is a nice and short film, man. This is only about 70 minutes, and I tell you, when those credits came up, I almost got whiplash. I was just sitting in the theater, those credits came up, and I had to go check my neck, man. This is a very short film. And I only bring that up because, gosh, man, you see so many two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour. I mean, geez, I just, you know, the amount of films I've had to watch this week for 1956 that are over three hours, over two-and-a-half hours, you know, good films. But it's so nice to just get a nice, quick film like this. Um, this is one that I've enjoyed much more when I've thought about it. When I initially walked out of the cinema, man, I was I was like, you know what, that was good. I, you know, a little, little light, but still good. Um, and while it didn't quite have the hit as emotionally hard as maybe I had anticipated, the one downside of going to the cinema so often is you see trailers for films, so, um, trailers I intentionally avoid, so, um, but, and this is one they showed the trailer to a lot, so, you know, I'm not gonna walk out of the cinema, man, I'm just gonna sit there and go, alright, you know, but, this is a very well done film. Uh, it's a film that's uh, shrouded in a lot of mystery in terms of the conclusion of the film, which is what I like a lot. Is that uh, you know you get a sense of what's going on. There is a little bit of exposition, but at the end of the film, there is there are some things that are still unexplained that really left me thinking about the journey that I just saw, but in a very good way as well. I think this is one that on subsequent viewings I'm going to appreciate a lot more. And um, Portrait of a Lady on Fire is a film that I uh, I just didn't get an opportunity to see. I was always kind of like. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll check it out at some point. But seeing this film um, really kind of accelerated me wanting to see that film. And that's a film that um, is very critically acclaimed. And everybody I know who's seen it is, uh, is, is said, uh, for the most part, I think, you know, has said good things about it. But uh, uh, yeah, man, Petite Maman. This one might be available streaming now, to my knowledge. I, I thought I saw it pop up, but I could be wrong about that. So either way, uh, check that one out. It's very good. Let me see, going down my list here. Yeah, I saw Memoria, talked about that. Uh, Neptune Frost, I just saw the other day. What a cool movie, man. This is another one that I've actually liked a lot. I, I really want to, I really want to watch again. This is, um, I don't, I think this is, uh, like, an 
African or South African film. Uh, it's, it's a very, um, uh, gosh, it's a very, it's kind of tricky to explain, but it's very cool, very cyberpunk, trippy film. Does a lot of unique stuff with the editing, um, part musical at times. There's a lot of <laughs> sequences where the characters go into this dance and go into these songs. And, and man, it's, it's a lot to take in, but it's one I definitely want to watch again. It's just, uh, also the, the costume design on this is so cool, man. There's parts where they're using like computer parts as for like, as like helmets. Ooh, I apologize. Just burp the microphone can't have that out and um they're wearing like jackets with like keyboard keys on it and it's just like oh my gosh man you could this is just a a visual marvel that if you have the opportunity to see this theatrically definitely do so this definitely benefits from seeing in a in a loud cinema in a completely dark room because there are sometimes they are doing such cool stuff with the editing that it really kind of sucks you in like a vortex and it's just a beautiful experience yeah it also makes me hate what i've said before i really don't I, I kind of despise rating films on Letterbox because I gave this a little uh, uh, less for rating than some other films, but I appreciated it more. So it's just like, does that mean I like it less? Well, no. Like just uh, maybe it, I don't know, man. I just I I think people get so hung up on ratings and even looking at some of these right now. I, I look at two films that have the same rating and I'm like, well, I feel two different feelings about these films. I mean. Um, just looking right here of recent films, I see like, uh, I don't know, um, what's the film here? Yeah, like, come on, come on, I gave the same rating, and I like that film a lot, but I like it for completely different reasons. Does that mean I have the same appreciation of both films? No, gosh, no. Um, so, I don't know, man, Except that's definitely a personal thing, but I think people get too hung up on that. Kind of like I'm doing right now, when people talk about zombie films or infected films, and I talk about that, you know, it's kind of, uh, kind of nonsensical, but that's me, you know? All right, one of the, uh, this one... Also might be 2021. Yes, it is. Supposedly. I haven't actually checked the real dates on any of these. I just kind of hover over them and they say 2021. But uh, who knows, man. Happening. The French film uh, from director Audrey Dion, or Dion, whatever, however you say her name, who is going to be directing the new Emmanuel film, Lea Saido. And this film was so terrific, man. I know I keep saying this, but another one that the more the more I look at these films, man, the more my rating goes up. This one actually, I think, is yes, yes, it is. You can currently rent this film to stream, and I think you definitely should do show do so. What a terrific film, man! This reminded me so much of another film of a uh, Italian or. Uh, Romanian film, one of the two. Um, sorry about that. I had to briefly pause again to let my cat in. And uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, I was talking about Happening Man. I was talking about uh, the comparison to four months, three weeks, and two days, which is uh, another terrific film. Uh, I bring that up because they're both period pieces about a protagonist trying to get an abortion and some of the restrict in their uh, at the time they weren't allowed to in their parts of the country so it's just all about a struggle of just trying to find it and um uh that man ha happening which also four months through two days one of the best ones of of i've seen of like recent memory and recent being like 2021 probably it's just a terrific film you got to check it out but happening is so good as well man i tell you um it's France in the 60s. She has to, she's trying to get an abortion. And um, what, I, what, the, what I love about the film is the escalation of it. You know, for one, they don't, uh, they never disclose uh, what exactly happened. I, I think, you know, it's supposed to be, to my knowledge, it's supposed to be implied that she was perhaps assaulted um, and this happened. But they never, for one, they never investigate it. And two, they never really bring it up. Uh, uh, in terms of how it happened, because she says that she, uh, the, the main uh, character in the film, she says that she's still a virgin, so um, I, I, I imagine it's what's supposed to be implied, or maybe she forgot, something like that, I really don't know, but the escalation of the film, uh, it, 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 it becomes more and more to like a thriller towards the last act, and there are just times where um, the plot, the plan gets diverted, and there's um, some ambiguity about some other characters, man, and, they be and her uh, lifestyle that she is trying to uh uh deal with man it's just such a terrific film and and i you know i guess this is 2021 but this would definitely be one of my favorites of the year man uh like i said streaming now so uh check it out man it's, it's fantastic um let's see what else we got here man going by through this a little bit faster than i thought i was but that's all right gives me more time to recommend some good movies man 
Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, this one I also just saw last week. Another 2021 film. Surprisingly, a film that stuck with me a lot more uh, th than I thought after the fact uh, because of just the uh, message I got out of it. And this is The Phantom of the Open. This is actually has a pretty solid cast behind it, man. This has Mark Rylance in the, in the lead role, Sally Hawkins, Reese Fons, and um, this is a film about a true story about this guy, uh, uh, Morris. Morris Filtcroft, who was uh, in his 60s or 70s, and he, and, he, and he just talked about wanting to get into the British Open and, you know, to play golf there, and, you know, he finds a way to do it, but he turns out to be just terrible. I mean, he's, he's the war, he gets in last place, I think. And he keeps trying, and, you know, he practices and tries to get better, and they ask him, you know, what about next time? He said, well, I'm just going to, you know, practice is perfect, you know. And he's just, he never, he just is not good, but, um, and the legacy that he has with him. And I was having a conversation with somebody last weekend, and we were talking about just, you know, uh, the life ahead of us, where we want, what we still want to accomplish and all that, you know. And um, an acquaintance of mine was talking about how they were feeling discouraged because they had reached a, uh, an age where they were just like, uh, and when I say an age, I'm not even, you know, we're still, we're still young. I don't want to make it sound like we're, you know, incapable of doing anything. The world is your oyster, man. It's never too late. But he felt discouraged because he felt like, his some opportunities were now behind him that he couldn't and I just said like man that's complete nonsense you know the idea that you have to that you're going to be the best at something you're going to be accomplished at something at a young age that you have to start young is such nonsense man what what age did did Bram Stoker write Dracula what was he in his 50s or anything like that what about these filmmakers who get started later on in life you know it's sort of like yeah, man, everybody has different opportunities and different backgrounds. You could be 70 and discover what you want to do with your life, man. And, you know, that's what I got out of Finn when they opened is that, yeah, this character who's older, who has, you know, a 9-to-5 job and all that, realizing that he wants to do this thing. And it's one where I'm watching it, and it's a very good film. You know, it's, it's a comedy, it, but, you know, and, and there's some, a couple of moments made me laugh out loud and act, you know. And, um, but the message at the end of it, just like, hey, man, it doesn't matter how old you are. Just go ahead and do your thing. I mean... I just think that's so um, inspirational and so just it's just like man it's, you're, you're never too old to do what you want to do man if, if you're 60, 70, 80, 90 and you want to do something you discovered then do it man because this idea of just like you have to be perfect at, at something because these other because you know you're comparing yourself to let's say you want to be an author oh this this author wrote this great book at when he was 15 or whatever or when he was 19 or you want to be a filmmaker oh man this person went to film school and they made these great shorts and when they were in their 20s they made this masterpiece and I can't even get a script off the ground you know I can't even, dude it's nonsense man it's absolute nonsense you you got to do what you got to do man we all have different backgrounds. We all have different circumstances. We're all part of different class families. It's all about discovering what you want to do and getting it done, no matter if you're 15, 25, 35, 45, 50, whatever. It doesn't matter, man. What I'm saying is that The Fan of the Open is very good, and you should check it out. All right. Going on from there, I think now we're officially into 2022. Um, this one was an Apple Plus film, I believe. I don't have Apple Plus. But I believe it's on there. Uh, this is Chow Chow Real Smooth. This is one that got a lot of talk out of some festival, I believe. This stars Cooper Rafe, uh, Dakota Johnson, and Vanessa Berghart. Uh, great film as well, man. This is um, uh, incredibly heartfelt. And uh, there are just some sequences in this film that really stuck with me, especially towards the end. Um, another one that the more I've thought about, this is this is definitely this was definitely gonna be one of my favorites of the year, man. Um, I just thought it was such a heartfelt and a film that never cops out. Um, you know, you got this guy who's out of college, um, and he is you know working in his and he's working in his town at like this uh, place at the mall. And he gets this job as like a now I don't know if this is an actual job or not. This this might be nonsense, man. But I don't know. It's a party fest. It's like a bar mitzvah party starter or something like that, man. I don't know if that's a real thing. But anyways, man, he ends up taking his uh, his uh, I don't know if it was his little brother or not or, or someone in the family to bar mitzvah or whatever. And he sees this this chick Dakota Johnson. And she's hanging out there. She has a uh, a daughter who has. Um, I don't know if it was autism or Asperger's or something like that, but she's very quiet, kind of keeps to herself, you know, doesn't really, not very social, and he finds a way to kind of, um, 
get you know get to know them and and he you know he's a good guy too what i like about his character is that uh he's he's a character who's not trying he's not trying to relate to uh the daughter just to get to, to dakota johnson you actually see i mean maybe that wasn't his intention at first which i mean hey man but uh, as it goes along we start to see that, um them develop a friendship not in a uh not in a um ridiculous way in a way where when the daughter starts kind of opening up more to him in, in her own way that it feels earned and it feels um, welcome and um, where the film goes to it, it was incredibly heartfelt and the ending of the film like the last five ten minutes uh, even though I thought the final the, like the final epilogue you probably could have left out I was I was kind of like all right man I get the point you know but um, there's a great sequence um, at the end of the film between two characters in a doorway that kind of lays out the film and I was like Man, that's just so. That's just so. That's just really terrific writing right there, man. Um, this is one that you definitely. I mean, all these got to check out. But yeah, man, this is on Apple TV Plus. I'm sure you can probably get a free trial. Check this one out, man. This is. I think this is one that a lot of people are going to catch on to, and people are really going to enjoy. And it's also a thing, man, where I, we're at a point now in Hollywood, where or not even Hollywood, in films where it's it's so refreshing to see characters uh, with autism or Asperger's who are written in a realistic way, you know. Um, I think for so many years there was that there was like a mindset of like Rain Man or or these kind of like these, oh they're ultra smart but they're ultra you know just totally far up but now we're seeing films like this that are um, that are more realistic uh, for characters written like that and that's just so great man um, going on from there uh, Brian and Charles man oh my gosh what a phenomenal freaking movie man this was totally this is a film that the the, the comedy is so is so uh, good that it makes up for some of the shortcomings that um, probably would infect another film and bring it down but this film is so it's incredibly heartfelt and incredibly hilarious man David Earl is this guy who uh, he's Brian he and he lives alone and but he likes making things and he makes this he makes this robot friend and oh my gosh man the design of the robot was was just the sight of him was cracking me up man he's just, his body is his body is like a giant washing machine <laughs> they they put his shirt over um he just towers over Brian whenever they're side by side, and he has a voice like uh, one of those text to speech voices, and it's it's all monotone. But oh man, it's it's absolutely hilarious. I mean, a lot of the film is a lot of gags with them, but um, you know, we start to it's a film where with when I could see its shortcomings, man, and that's okay. I, I think maybe my two shortcomings that I really had was that there's a villain that's introduced a little too late in the film and becomes kind of like, like why is he interested now in this? And, um, and a love interest who, it's not even really a complaint so much as sort of just like, uh, it's a love interest just to be for the main character. and But you know what? It's a thing where even the love interest, I thought their relationship was actually very sweet. And, um, and I really liked those two characters together. Uh, and, uh, man, as it goes along, it just, it gets so... And when I say heartfelt, it never gets too sentimental. And the end of the film especially, I think, kind of sums up the whole tone of the film where it, the ending is is completely ridiculous. And, and But you, you've adjusted to the reality that the movie has set hidden, that a character could do this. But, it, but at the end of the film, it's something that is so silly and comical, especially the, the image of it. But it's also very, very sweet and very heartfelt. And to the point where I got very emotionally involved, man. I may have even got a little watery-eyed. Yeah, I'll say it, man. Uh, and I'm just like, what a smartly written film, man. I, I just, this is one that I really knew nothing about going into it. I mean, a, a lot of films that I see, I don't really know too much about. But usually I'll see a trailer. So like, this is a film that I didn't see anything about. And just walking in um, and then walking out, it was just like, man, I, I this was such a man this is definitely one of my just top favorites of the year right now it's it's probably right behind montana story and happening honestly i mean i guess uh montana story and brian and charles are definitely 2022 happening was probably 2021 but if that's the case man brian and charles is definitely my, my a number two of the my number two of the film <laughs> my number two of the year so far man i apologize um Let's see what else we got here. I don't have too much time left, so I guess I'll skim over a couple of those. I, I, I also mentioned before, Apollo 10 and a Half was a film I liked a lot. I think I talked about Hustle. I don't know if I talked about Hustle. I won't get too into that, because that's probably a good amount of people have seen that. But um, Hustle was great. Definitely a big fan of that one. Uh, Jackass Forever was great. A lot of people saw that. Uh, the Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. These are big theatrical films, but I really enjoyed those. Um... Let's 
Let's see. Did I talk about men? I don't think I did. The new Alex Garland film. Yeah, I'll talk about that briefly. Why not? I think I got that and one more, and then I should be good for the year. So, men. Alex Garland's new film. Man, Alex Garland was such a, a cool filmmaker, man. He came out with Ex Machina, which I liked, didn't love. I thought it was a cool film. Uh, and then he did Annihilation, which I did love. I really love that film, actually. And then he did Men, uh, which has been kind of a divisive film, man. It's sort of like, you know, you go online, people are like, oh, it's really good, oh, it's really kind of bland, whatever. Um... Some people are really onto it, and hey, man, like I've said, I think I've said before, I love divisive films that really kind of split the audience. You're either going to be on board with this or you're not, and to me, I was totally on board with this. Um, you know, Jesse Buckley, I think, is one of my favorite actors working right now. I think she is just, she's an actor who, even in films I'm not as crazy about, I, I just think that she is such a unique and interesting presence, and she has such a interesting uh, character actor. I also love films about being isolated uh, and gradual horror where their characters are not outright evil or mean, or but it's sort of like they are either, they're just being very passive-aggressive. And this is a film where we have, uh, you know, this character who has a very, uh, who has had a, a traumatic background and, and uh, something that would really kind of haunt anyone and what i like about it too is that they don't that they pretty much tell you right off the bat in the first half really what's going on they really don't waste a lot of time um going with that and um there's a lot to be looked at with this about some of the i mean you could you could say it's like you know there's a lot of metaphors going on a lot of symbolism here and there but there's i, I which is fine and all that but i think sometimes the f films get too hung up on that where film you know I, I there's actually there's a couple films I can name off right now but I'm not gonna that I wasn't particularly a fan of that got great reviews that but people are like oh well this means this and this means that and I go all right well that's good and all man but if the film's not very good I just I, I don't care you know I'm a big you know I'm a big proponent of the, the film's got to be good first everything else is secondary man so I mean x y a lot of uh, films where people are like oh well you know if you didn't like it this time, it means you didn't get it. And it's like, well, hey, man, there's plenty of films I don't get the first time, but I still like them. But if so, if I have to watch a, an hour long video essay about this or that to like the film, then the film, the script failed. It just did, man. I'm sorry. You know, anyways, I'm going completely off topic here. <laughs> going completely off topic here um men yeah i just i loved the escalation of it and the last act goes completely off the rails in a incredibly visual way that harkens back to a certain uh well i really don't i was going to reference it to another 80s horror film that well yeah i'm not going to say it because a certain film that's kind of known for its last act but anyways Love the film, thought it was great. Give it a chance if you think it'll be your thing. I'll talk about one more, because I really gotta get out of here, because I have only a couple minutes left. Uh, Jazz Fest, a New Orleans story. It's a documentary about the Jazz Fest that goes on, in New, obviously in New Orleans, about the um, different acts. It's less of a uh, narrative documentary about the the origins, the rise, of, you know, and all that. Um, it's really more about kind of a celebration of a lot of these artists, a lot of big artists. You have like Springsteen, Jimmy Buffett, Earth, Wind, and Fire. You know, a lot of these bands. I, I'll be honest, I don't really know a lot of the. I didn't really know a lot of his music, but this is a film that you got to see in a cinema to really appreciate the uh, to appreciate a lot of the performances that go into it. The film doesn't stop to give a whole performance, but when it does, you really kind of feel it, man. And I found myself really getting into a lot of the music here and a lot of acts here who. I wasn't really too familiar with I definitely could see myself really going back and listening to um but yeah I mean I like Springsteen I like Earth, Wind, Fire and all that so you know like those when they were on screen it was great and you know the food they talk about and they talk about obviously Hurricane Katrina and coming back it's just a nice warm documentary man it's not one that's going to change your life but you watch it and you walk out in fact I even had a discussion with two of the patrons in the theater it's just three of us man and they were really getting into it and I was like you know what man those two people you know a guy it's funny he came up to me and he apologized he's like I'm sorry me and my wife are being you know a bit much we didn't know you were here and I said hey man you do your thing man this is what film's about man you enjoy yourself and they were having a good time. We were talking a little bit about music after. And, man, I was like, man, you know what? That's what cinema's about, man. Just that, that cultural feeling, just being with each other, man. Just getting what you... Just, just seeing how into the film they were, man. It, it just made it all worth it, man. But I got to get out of here, man, because there's so much to do today. I got to get started on that 1956 episode. Oh, a lot to get done. But it's all going to be rewarding and it's all going to be worth it in the end, man. I got to... Take care of my cat, who's really enjoying that box he's rubbing up against. 
All right, I hope you're all doing well. Hope you have a fantastic 4th of July weekend. Uh, even if you're not in America or you're whatever, choosing not to celebrate 4th of July, I hope you have that mentality of celebration, but also getting the work done, man, because that's what's important, and that's how it's going to get done one step at a time. Thanks, guys, for listening to another episode, and I hope you will tune in this weekend, and I hope you will tune in next week.